Well, hello, Inside Scoopers. Marhaba wa salamu alaykum and welcome. Not too long ago, we visited Rodney in the Creators Lounge to bring some Middle Eastern spices into your dog's food bowl. We created this awesome, balanced, Arabic inspired dog food recipe for your adult dogs, and we called it The Flavors of the Middle East. Rotney, Rotney, do you copy? We're on our way to Canada right now, so let's go. Let's go. We are going to Canada to see Rotney to film the first ever Arabic dog food recipe, and we're super excited. Super excited. Super excited. Watch this video to the end to get the full recipe and the exclusive behind the scenes footage from our visit at the Creators Lounge. <laughs> this is where all the magic happens, and this is it. This is amazing. This is all done for the love of dogs. Here are all the cameras set up, and this is our beautiful backdrop for today. Flavors of the Middle East. Here's our beautiful table with all of our ingredients. There goes Rodney making some last minute <laughs> things. Larry and Karen making some ch cheat I'm seats. I'm making a recipe because um, I have older lady eyes and I need the recipe to be slightly larger. <laughs> 12.5. Thank you so much. So I can actually read the recipe. Thank you so much. <laughs> That goes over there. This recipe is complete and balanced and it's been formulated under the FEDIF standards. We formulated this recipe with the help of Emma Rutherford from the Natural Canine Kitchen. Shout out to you, Emma, for making this recipe extra special. So tell me a little bit more about this recipe because I got really excited when you sent it to me. I was so excited about the spices, but there, I think there's a little bit more to the story than just the spices. So tell me how you decided to come up with this. We really wanted to make an Arabic, Middle Eastern inspired recipe for dogs because Rodney is from Lebanon originally and we live in Dubai. All the ingredients are inspired by the Lebanese cuisine and the Emirati cuisine. Egyptian. and a little bit of Egyptian um, flavors in there as well because there's a lot of Egyptians in Dubai and we wanted to honor them too. And I love it that it's uh, balanced with whole foods. So no supplements exactly. needed, which means mm -hmm. yeah, wherever you are around the world, you should be able to find yeah. the ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, we purposely used only ingredients that you can get all over the world because like in Dubai, we use things like camel and we know that here in Canada or in the US, you won't be able to find camel. Mm -hmm. I know Rodney does. I do. <laughs> I, have a, I have a secret camel supplier. So what's our first ingredient we're starting off with? So we're going to start with 270 grams of chicken wings. This is where our dogs are going to get the calcium from. But believe it or not, chicken wings and necks in and of themselves are actually too much calcium. So we have to add to those bony foods some extra meat. If you might not feel so comfortable just yet feeding your dog whole bones, you might want to grind it up in a food processor or in a meat grinder. So next up we have 160 grams of lamb. This is going to be like a, a Lebanese plate, meat plate. It looks like you've done this before. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You have a, a side profession. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I used to make meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. The Italians would love that. <laughs> And my dogs absolutely go crazy over lamb because of the fattiness, the fat content that's inside the lamb. So this one should be like a real treat. Yeah. So next up we have chicken heart and we have 160 grams of this. Salt this. You went from being like the most best food presenter to 
failing that job miserably. <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> no, that is good. I, I like see it. what you're doing there. I see now how you're layering that. Now we're gonna add 125 grams of sardines, and these are fresh. They do have to be frozen though before you feed them fresh. That's also true with the salmon. Research says three weeks, so I, I'm a little follower. Most people yeah. around the world, I think the easiest source will be at your local grocery store. Can typically is the easiest to find, and no fresh sardines. And watch out for the BPA that are also in cans. Yeah, and like you said, mentioned to get those in water. I know there's a lot of different flavors of sardines out there, like tomato and chili sauce mm -hmm. and lime sauce. Water is usually your best bet. Sardines are added to meet our dog's vitamin D requirements and also for the essential fatty acids that are in these sardines. All right, so the next ingredient is going to be beef liver, mm -hmm. and we have 60 grams of this. Liver does a fantastic job of meeting some trace mineral requirements. We always use beef liver, or almost always use beef liver in our uh, recipes because I feel like they're just so incredibly nutritious. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Power punch of vitamin A. Now we have 35 grams of beef kidney. The kidney provides an awesome source of zinc and selenium, which are two pretty hard to come by nutrients. Kidney also is a fantastic source of all of the B vitamins. Beef kidney stinks. It's the worst. All right, now we're going into the vegetables. The vegetables we're gonna use, they're all inspired by the Arabic cuisine, of course, and our dogs love them. So first up, we have zucchini. We have 20 grams of zucchini. We're gonna add this in here. <laughs> okay, so I'm working on presentation skills, and so far it's not the best. It's rare to find a dog that doesn't like it. Yeah. It's a neutral veggie. Dogs love it. Great source of fiber. Good, good prebiotic fiber for the belly. In Mediterranean homes, love to boil and stuff zucchini. My dogs are always in for that. But I can also grate it fresh and raw, and my dogs have zero issues. All right. Up next, we have 30 grams of red pepper. I'm going to sprinkle that around because of the columns of this. Beautiful. And fantastic source of uh, vitamin C. Yeah. Of course, dogs can make their own vitamin C, but supplement of vitamin C research shows absolutely benefits the joints, the eyes, helps gather through radicals. So I really am a huge believer in providing extra vitamin C via whole food sources. So, And for a lot of you fat buffs out there, I remember I would always be challenged on what vegetable or fruit had the highest amount of vitamin C. I always typically went to the orange because mm -hmm. growing up as kids, you always thought it was the orange. Mm -hmm. Green peppers are just loaded. One of the most mm -hmm. action-packed fruits or vegetables, vegetable in the world with vitamin C. So now we have 70 grams of spinach. I'm gonna give you a tip here. So whenever we feed our dogs vegetables, it's best to actually grind them in a food processor to make them as small as possible. They're more bioavailable and they're easily to digest in. And your dog is less likely to pick them out. <laughs> <laughs> should I salt this or should yeah, I salt just salt it? do it. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, my god. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay, the rest I'm just You're gonna a little put over. crow technique. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. Now we have 36 grams of parsley, and that's a lot of parsley, but it comes with so many amazing benefits, so we just had to use this. It's a great blood detoxifier. Mm -hmm. It does a great job for supporting kidney health. It's high in vitamin K, which helps the dog's body make clotting factors in the liver. It's a yeah. huge staple in the Middle East. The num salads, everything yeah. are garnished with parsley. Tabbouleh, the prime ingredient, yes. is parsley. It is like literally the green leaf of the country. The Middle Eastern cuisine is full of spices, all kinds of spices, and they come with so many amazing, amazing health benefits. You probably have a lot of these spices at home already and use it for yourself, but we want to show you that you can actually use it for your dog as well. Not only is it super healthy, but it will provide a different taste sensation to your dog's mouth. You should yeah. see the drool on my dog's mouth. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just trying to see up above our show. <laughs> I think it's We've beautiful. We've all failed, all cooking <laughs> No, Does it look good? It's okay. 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 Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we're going to add four grams of cinnamon. My favorite right here is cinnamon. And I never would have thought about putting cinnamon in pet food. It smells it so makes good. the food smell so much fresh. And it's so healthy. Yeah. I mean yeah. for human health, but of course the same benefits are passed uh, up the food chain for our pets. So that's 
That's a lot of cinnamon too, and your dogs have no problem eating this no, much cinnamon. No, no. Mm -hmm. So cinnamon has potassium, manganese, as well as polyphenols, but it also lowers blood sugar. It um, does a great job of preventing clotting in the body. It just is, it's, it's a superfood as well. Yeah. Honestly, I wish you can smell it right here, but you're gonna make it at home, so you're gonna know what this smell is. Yeah. Here we have two grams of cumin seeds. They are ground up. And cumin is an amazing digestive tonic. It's great for dogs who have GI upsets. For some. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why? Why do you have to add that? <laughs> because that's what I call it. I just want to add that what we call it. Cumin. <laughs> I just, I just felt like defending myself. Maybe I shouldn't have. Just randomly. <laughs> <laughs> do not put the. Okay. Just take that. Okay. Sorry. So cumin is a great source of uh, copper and magnesium. It kills foodborne pathogens. Mm. Wow. It does a great job of preventing E. coli or salmonella growth in food. So we have three grams of turmeric and turmeric is a superfood. It's anti-inflammatory, it helps prevent cancer and it has so many great benefits. The turmeric is a staple, one of the most heavily researched, in fact, it's not the most heavily researched herb in the entire world, over 6,500 published studies. And it is used so much in the Middle Eastern cuisine. Next, we have 16 grams of ground almonds. Running out of space here. <laughs> and that's our vitamin E, the majority of our vitamin E coming in through those almonds. We have six grams of sesame seeds. So here's the best part. We were at Mister. We had a hard time finding sesame seeds yesterday. Oh really? So Rodney suggested that we buy 40 bagels and then scrape them off the top. <laughs> no, okay. just so you know. It works. Yeah. I'm it so works. glad you didn't have to do that. Yeah, he is well. <laughs> Well. So now we're going to salt bay this Himalayan salt, which comes in at two grams. My favorite part right here. <laughs> Most of it went actually not on the plate. <laughs> Good job. Don't try that at home. <laughs> and if you do, make sure you <laughs> get the plate. And you know, a lot of people will ask, why would I need to add salt to my dog's food? Actually, dogs and cats both, they have a pretty substantial sodium and chloride requirement. And that would be found in nature in the blood of animals, uh, as well as spleen provides, meets uh, sodium requirements for dogs and cats. But believe it or not, animals can be salt deficient if you're not adding appropriate amounts of salt in. So. I remember Steve Brown telling me that in a lot of foods that were analyzed, raw foods that were analyzed, because manufacturers didn't want to gross people out with blood, mm -hmm. heavy saturated foods with yeah. blood. Again, these foods ended up yeah. deficient in salt. And I will tell you uh, that when I was doing hair analysis early on in my practice, uh, all of my raw fed dogs that were not getting salt in their diets were sodium deficient. Oh, wow. Yes. And that helps to balance their electrolytes. So don't be nervous about the tiny amount of salt in the recipe. It's actually required. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, our last ingredient, one gram of kelp. Ta -da! Ta -da! Now we have a Middle Eastern bonus for you guys, which is the pomegranate. Pomegranate is used so much in the Middle Eastern cuisine. They're literally in every supermarket over here and the health benefits are amazing. Today it was quite a journey trying to find this in Nova Scotia. Yeah. We literally had to travel halfway across the province. Operation Pomegranate. It's Operation Pomegranate. We're searching all over Nova Scotia trying to find a pomegranate. Stay with us if this doesn't work. The vlog is on. You guys gotta go back home. <laughs> Yay! We found it! Pomegranate. You guys can officially stay in Canada. We found the pomegranate. <laughs> yeah, a study up. done in the veterinary literature they, on dogs, and they found that it improved the cardiovascular health of dogs when pomegranate extract was added to the diet, and of course, other health benefits. And another thing that you can add is raw goat milk. Now, you don't necessarily need raw goat milk to balance this recipe, but it is a great addition to this recipe. And it's Middle Eastern style. In Lebanon, this is actually a staple. It's called Leba for exactly. the yes. Arabic speaking people. Yeah. And Leba, it's almost on everything, on every dessert yeah. that they add in there. What a great probiotic punch. Yeah. Ta -da! Ta -da! Hey, we're done. The Beautiful. first ever Arabic recipe created. Middle East came to Canada today. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so this recipe that we just made is one kg of food for your dog and it has approximately 1,500 calories. And you can find the exact recipe description in the comment section down below. There is a link to the exact recipe if you didn't have a chance to write it all down. There you go, a taste of the Middle East, your dogs, I can promise you will love this. It's been wonderful to have this unique, beautiful, fresh, whole food recipe with some ingredients that most people aren't using that we would be able to offer to our pets as often as possible. What we say is feed as much fresh food as you can afford to feed. So if you can make this recipe every now and then, if you can make it uh, once a week and freeze it into ice cube trays, you can use it as a topper to process food. You can swap out one or two meals a week of your processed food diet and feed a fresh food meal. So this is a beautiful way to add a bunch of brand new yeah. flavors and textures to your, to your dog's dish. So we started something called Fresh Fred Friday. And what this is is basically us trying to encourage pet parents to add fresh food to their dog's diet at least just one time a week. Just adding bits and pieces, as little as 20%, really makes a difference in your dog's diet and in your dog's health. So many people are coming to us for help and trying to see like, how can I switch to a raw diet? And this is just absolutely amazing because it's showing us that, you know, Dubai is ready. Dubai is not only pet friendly, but they're also very, alert about health so that's a great thing and this is why we're so happy to have done an arabic recipe because our number one question is always do you have recipes and now we have a middle eastern recipe so that's amazing here goes our middle eastern inspired dog food that we made <laughs> at the creator's one Famous for cranberries, so that's all we have are cranberry wow. trees. That's why it's like it's kind of like a hybrid apple slash cranberry. Yeah. The most bitter thing you'll yep. ever eat she ever. She actually of is just eating. so funny. It makes you want to juice or something out of them. Oh. How about this one? This trip to Canada was absolutely amazing. We learned so much from two absolutely amazing people. They really showed us around Nova Scotia quite a bit and it is one beautiful little place. Rodney also made a version of this recipe and you can find it on the Facebook group, The Inside Scoop. Please share this recipe with all your friends and family to inspire them to add a little bit more fresh food into their dog's diet, to make them live longer, to have them healthier. Please let us know how your dog likes the food. Leave a comment for us and let us know how you like it and how your dog likes it because we really want to know. If you want more videos like this, leave a comment for us. Bye! See ya! Bye See guys! Ya. See ya. <laughs> Yay! It says the recording stopped and oh, I don't know why it stopped. Oh, Rodney. Oh, no.